We are on an ingenious Wave 2 wireless access point. I'm going to show you how to set up a 5 gigahertz connection. In a previous video, I showed how to set up a 2.4 gigahertz connection, so you can check that out if you need to. So this particular access point comes with both different radios because if you can take advantage of 5 gigahertz, then you'll generally get better speed. Let's go to Network and Wireless on the left-hand side. Click on that. And let's go over to where it says 5 gigahertz on the right-hand side. So if you want to have both 2.4 and 5 turned on, then just go ahead and make sure both of them are checked. If you want to turn one off, you can go ahead and uncheck the one you don't want. All right, so let's go to Access Points. We can choose Access Point, Bridge, WDS, etc., etc. In a previous video, I explained what all those options were. You can check that out in this playlist. Now, in the wireless mode, we want to hit the drop down and choose, see our different options. If you want to get the best speed, then you'll want the AC slash N option. A slash N is a little bit older technology, as well as A and N. So AC is going to be the absolute fastest, and it pairs itself with N itself. So we'll go ahead and choose that if you want the fastest one. Under the channel HT mode, you can choose 80 megahertz for AC only. So that way, if you only have devices that can connect using AC, and of course, you'll have to check with your vendor, go to the website and support area of whatever device you're connecting from, then you're going to get much better speed. Now, if you have older devices that are not AC and some AC as well, then just go ahead and choose the 40 megahertz. All right, so the transmit power and data rate is set to automatic. So we're going to go ahead and scroll down and keep going. And we're going to go down to where it says SSID under the 5 gigahertz. So make sure you scan past the 2.4 and choose this. So now we have the 5 gigahertz SSID. And this is the broadcast that's going to go out to any devices who would like to connect, connect to it. All right, so I've changed the SSID name. And now I'm going to go to Edit. And I'm going to edit the security mode. So we want to choose WPA2 PSK. That is the best security mode for a home or small business. If you're using a Radius server and you're using certificates, then you can choose a WPA2 Enterprise. But most people aren't using those, so go ahead and choose WPA2. Encryption-wise, don't choose TKIP. That is a backwards compatible, broken type of encryption. Go ahead and choose just AES only. Some devices that used TKIP in the past were, say, the Nintendo uh, DS devices and other you know, older devices like that. So if you still have some of those devices that need to get onto the internet, then you can choose TKIP as well, but that will lower your security. Passphrase, of course, make it something good and secure. That's uh, probably a little bit more secure than it needs to be. Uh, leave the group key update interval at 3600. That's a good balance between keys updating on a regular basis, and they rotate through those different keys in case you've been hacked. So if we want to connect more than one access point, then you'll want to enable fast roaming. So it switches between the two different access points. If you don't have that, then don't worry about it. Just go ahead and leave it set to disabled. The wireless MAC filter is if you want to lock down access to this access point by using the hardware address on the devices. These are relatively hard to find for amateurs, so I don't recommend that you choose to enable this. But if you are a professional and you want to do that, just go ahead and choose allow MAC in the list or deny MAC in the list if you see somebody who's connecting you don't want them there. And you can either lock it down one way or the other, and then you can put in the MAC address of the people you either want or don't want on your network. Wireless traffic shaping. If you think people are using too much uh, da download and upload bandwidth, then you can enable that, and that keeps them from choosing too much. We can either choose the download limit as a whole or as a per user. So for instance, if you did not check the per user, then you might get uh, a real problem with slowdowns. So I would check the per user instead and then maybe change this to something like five megabits. So if we have five megabits download and one upload and we lock them down that way, it would mean that we have to have a lot more than five megabit download or upload from our internet provider. And you can always check your bill on your internet to see what speed you're supposed to have. Once you get everything set the way you want it, just go ahead and click Save. 
and then it takes us back to our original page and then we see all these changes so once we click on changes we can click apply and what will happen is, is it will not only apply but it will reboot the device and when the device comes back up you'll have your new settings if you change your mind you can click on revert and it will undo the changes that we just made so that's how you set up a 5 gigahertz connection on an ingenious wave 2 wireless access point